hello welcome back to the second part of this tutorial on how to implement pay stack withdrawal or transfer for your customers on your flutter application in the first uh, video i showed you most of the codes i've implemented it just to keep this video short i had to copy the codes i had before and brought them into this project so in this second part of the tutorial i will be explaining all the code i have copied before i dive right uh, right in i will have to show you the finished application so that when explaining the code you will be able to map it to what i have showed you here so for the withdrawal we first need to verify the user's uh, identity we do this by checking the user's account number so we i enter my account number so i'm in nigeria and i'm using paystack nigeria for this so i select it will quickly verify my identity by calling an endpoint that returns part of what is returned is my name so i display the name here just to show and it also shows once i have verified the identity of the user then i display the amount field so user can enter their amount i also have a validator for amount just to make sure that they enter over here it says minimum is five thousand let's try and withdraw so the validator tells us that this message so this is where i will pause for the uh, display and i will explain this code to you so over here is our ui for the withdrawal here you have um, this all this they are contained in here so let me explain most of the method and functions that are used here here i define my variables for the application and over here i have the fetch bank data which i am calling so this is initialized when the screen uh, comes up for the first time so it calls the fetch bank data and once it returns it i save it to banks which is a list and uh, push it to the drop down view you have here so the second one is to verify account number so when you call this you have to pass the um you have to pass what do i what did i pass account number and bank code part of what is being returned from banks is the bank code so once i select the bank the bank code is passed to this variable and i can then use it and once i'm done once i'm able to verify this user's account i set this account available equal to true so that this field will be displayed this field and this field they will be displayed so this is what i have here i have this field right here and i am using visibility to toggle their visibility either visible or not visible depending on the state of this variable either true or false so that is what i'm doing i'm also using a form key here to trigger this validator that i have for this amount validator this amount validator can be found here under handlers so this amount validator makes sure that the input is double the input is not empty and the input is within this range so that is what this actually does so the next one i will talk about is um I've talked about the verify account number which is happens between these two whenever I toggle it and now we have the initiate pay stack transfer so before we go to the initiate pay stack transfer the uh, functions I'm calling for pay stack transfer can be found under services pay stack services and don't forget I have a bank model which I I generated from a response from the bank response in under um, paystack response 
under pay stack response when you call the bank so i generated this model and that's what i am using on here over here you can see bank data it's coming from this bank model so for the services just like i mentioned in the first video you first you need to first make sure you create transfer recipient and then use the uh, recipient code you get from transfer recipient where's the recipient code okay this is where recipient code is returned then you use it and pass it when you are finally initiating the transfer and also don't forget your amount you have to multiply amount by 100 being that the last two digits are decimal points or decimal units that represent the lowest value of any currency for us dollars it can be cent for nigeria naira it can be kobo and so on and so forth so once this is called if this transaction is successful then it will give you this response it will generate a transfer a transfer code to return the transfer code to you with this transfer code you can decide to save it in your database or any other place uh, withdrawal table and the likes so let's go back to our withdrawal screen on our withdrawal screen you can see that under this place I first of all make sure that this account name account number and bank code which is set when these two guys uh, validate account number are not empty if they are empty you get a message telling you to split select withdrawal bank so but if they are not empty we go ahead to call this function which in turn returns the recipient code i am printing the recipient code here just to make sure that the recipient code is not empty when you come over to this place i have with if the recipient code is not empty then we will now generate a unique reference unique reference is part of what you need for you to be able to com uh, complete this and the unique reference has to be unique just as the name uh, stipulates because once it's not unique then this uh, this will fail it will fail to tell you that uh, it's not unique so the next one we did was after we make this request we are looking for the transfer code we want to get the transfer code from here once it's successful i'm also printing it you have i display this uh, snack bar to tell you it's successful i also print it on the screen and once any error occurs along the way then you have all this here to show so for the generating of unique reference i'm getting the current date and time and i'm also introducing a random number just to make sure that in case two uh two users or customers if they initiate a transaction at the same time it will not one will not get uh one will not fail so just to make it unique more unique and i am hashing the um the unique reference so as to make sure that it is truly unique and i'm returning it as this so that was that uh, these are the steps i took for me to be able to get this done so over here um over here i've tested this before and i'm on test right now i've created this recipient before so i'm going to delete this recipient so we can create it afresh and also don't forget about your api key and base url in this video in the github repo you might get from the video description link this might not be available so you need to create this and add your api key for now i'm using the test api key and i will delete it or regenerate it once i'm done so don't bother using it it won't work so over here on the app this is what we have and i've deleted the recipient and on the transfers I've made, I've made 21, 21, and 5. So I'm going to initiate a 10,000 Naira transfer over here. So let's go ahead and initiate a 10,000 Naira transfer over here. 
So, it says withdrawal successful. 10,000 Naira has been withdrawn, transferred to. So, let's refresh this and see what it gives us. So you see the 10,000 Naira. But this transfer is not complete. Reason being that you will need to finalize the transfer by clicking on it, entering the OTP that will be sent to your email address and your phone number for you to finalize the transfer. And if you go to transfer recipient, you will discover that the recipient has been also added. So these are the uh, flow for this. I will be adding the source code the link to the source code on the video description you can go ahead go there copy it and use it so you can also add other things like loading showing loading dialog boss and the rest this is all for now in the next tutorial we will be looking at how to process withdrawal using ussd and other medium provided by paystack thanks for now and bye